Welcome to the next level of you. I am your host, Danielle Rocco. In the upcoming series, you are going to witness the unique transformation of two extraordinary women. You see, a transformation just doesn't happen from the outside. It happens from the inside out, causing a ripple effect into all aspects of your life. I am so excited to have you join Renee and Angela in their journey. You will be right there through their successes and their struggles. At the beginning of each episode, you will hear from them directly on where they are emotionally and be part of their one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, followed by the Rock LLC elite group of professionals that will be assisting them in their transformation. It is my pleasure to first introduce Renee. Renee went from CEO to stay-at-home mom back to CEO. Let's hear from Renee in her own words why she has chosen to be part of The Next Level of You. Hi, my name is Renee Wagner and I'm doing The Next Level of You because I've come to a point in my life that I'm tired of letting my self-doubt and my self-belief get in the way of my goals and my dreams and being the best person I can be to be a best mom, a wife, a business partner. Uh, achieve my goals and actually know that I'm my worth it has value and that I'm good enough as the next person that not it's not someone else's dream these dreams these dreams are mine and I can achieve them and I'm as good enough as that next person so if I didn't do the show I'd keep myself in that mindset and I would never grow and I'd never overcome this fear and those are my goals that's what I want to do on this show I want to overcome what has held me back and all of the self-doubt and the self-judgment and the self just that I just believe that I can't do things even doing this video I didn't think I could do it but I'm doing it so that's gonna be what you'll see part of Renee's journey is finding her value and acting on it there is an internal shift and struggle that happens when you go from complete caregiver to accepting time for yourself without guilt let's find out how Renee is doing with that so this is what I was putting together your outline for. I did you send back the questionnaire because I didn't even look yet because I just I walked in and called you. Okay, good because I, I didn't look. Finish. I worked on it last night and I, I didn't finish it, but I was gonna finish it this morning. Okay. But I, I was think I was thinking about the questions and I was thinking more before I answered because I'm trying to figure out what I want to get out of it. And so when mm -hmm. you first asked when you first asked me, it was pageant, and so. I have a right. long way to go if I do do the pageant. I'm not physically where I was last year. I'm not mentally there. So it would take a lot, I think. And then financially, it would take a lot as well. So I don't know, I don't know. Right, if that is, what. Um, so this is what I think regarding that. Okay. I think that one, if you do end up doing the pageant, let's say. Yeah. You need to be physically and mentally and financially, even if you're not doing the pageant, you need to focus on those things because that is, the pageant is just gonna blossom from your, from you being physically healthy because that's gonna help with your mental state and where you are mentally and where you are emotionally, right? So right. I think the pageant can, pageant can just manifest if it manifests from there and if it does, great then we can do you know the specific things of like the walking coach going over the questions like because I have the questions that they give okay. I was given them last year no you go you do a lot of like um and I'm nervous because I don't I've never done like aesthetic stuff like I've gotten facials and of course I'm aging mm -hmm. and I have tired eyes and so, like, I think I have tired eyes more than anything. And so, I think, like, maybe getting on a good, like, something that's going to help me feel better physically. Yeah. And, I, and you, outward. Outward, because it is. We should. Yeah. Like, I always say, like, when you feel, like, even if you're in sweatpants, if you put just, like, a little makeup on, you feel a little better. And it gives you... There is a connection that we have. When you take five minutes for you to just like pamper yourself, that internally is giving you five minutes of love. When you don't, when you just don't even look and go, you have not given yourself any like 
oh my God, I love myself. I'm looking at myself. I'm tending to myself. Just like you do your children. If you go all day without touching them, they're like, what? What's going on? But you, if you give them a hug and you do things for them, that is showing them love. Well, there's no difference than you doing it to yourself. So I think that part of it has to be key whether you do the pageant or not, because you're going into your whole presence is you're wanting to make a difference in women's life, right? Right. Like, and I, right. And I, th I think you just kind of zoomed in on something that I was thinking prior to all of this is my friend came over the other day and she she's older. She's a grandmother and she's 61 and she's like beautiful. She's Filipino. She takes care of her skin. Like she looks so youthful. And so she's always like pushing me to go with her to the gym and go do these facials with her. And it, I'm like, I'm yeah. in a different stage in my life. And financially, like, I can't keep up with her, like with all that mm -hmm. stuff. But I'm like, I go, if you would have known me, you know, 20 years ago, I always wore heels. I always, I wouldn't leave this house. I wouldn't leave my house without looking like I was like hitting a runway. Like that was me. And I know life changes. But I'm like, what happened to that person? And why did I not, why do I leave the house now looking like I just woke up out of bed? Exactly. And that's what oh, I would say. Exactly. Why does it change? Like, why does it change? Right. And I would like to get some of that back. And I, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Like even like today, I didn't feel like putting any makeup on. I looked like crap. But I'm like, if I don't <laughs> try, I'm gonna feel really bad being on this call because I know I don't look anything I want to look like. But it is um, what it is, and I get it. But I need to try at least. <laughs> yeah. And you know so what? You need to get like your jam back. You need to get that caring about yourself because the priorities happen. Get married, have kids, you know, and then you kind of go on this and in that get married and have children and raise a family and be a wife there. We are not trained. Society doesn't teach us. It doesn't promote self-care it's now starting but you got to look for it right you got to go out there and look oh self-care for it to matter but if you're not feeling your best are you the best wife you are no the best mom no, no. you know so no, you're right and I, I notice when I blow dry my hair or I take a shower and I try to look halfway decent I feel better about myself and when I go in public I'm not so skittish or you know like feeling a little insecure at times when i try to look a little better than i normally do so, so i think yeah so that whole taking time for yourself feeling like that getting getting your jam back that's yeah. essential whether you do the pageant or not like <laughs> and that's I told Bob that like last night he's like well he's like you get all this stuff going on and i'm like yeah and i said i need to get myself in order i'm like i need to like refresh me because now I'm yeah. going to be out and so being social. I'm going to be at events. I'm going to be on the show. I'm going to be promoting the magazine. Like I can't just keep like not taking care of myself. Right. Now I'm going to be in view. And so, yeah, I can only hide. <laughs> Some people are going to save me. <laughs> Everyone's going to save me now. <laughs> not just in the pageant once a year. <laughs> No, it's going to be good. It's that's what's going to get you. I think who who is Renee now at this stage in in your life, you know, because it's not the Renee before it's not it's not that person. You're not that person. Too much has happened in your life to go back and be like, I was like this before. Well, yeah, because you weren't a mom. You weren't a wife you know you were 20 years younger so yeah. i think we need to kind of take that and think of the things that you liked you know but not that you're missing it and you should be that because you shouldn't be that but there are parts that you say that like might you might be like you know i love wearing heels and i don't do that anymore that's like a recognition of things that you like you know, you might be like, God, I went out clubbing all the time. Then I don't like that. I don't want that in my life. I'm over that. Right. So we're going to like that. We're done. So use the experiences that you've kind of gone through to be like, I really still enjoy that part of me, you know, and I haven't, I haven't brought it out like looking nice or wearing heels or, you know, getting my hair done or a facial, whatever it is of those parts of your life you use, but not um, or not, I shouldn't say use, but recognize, but without saying that that's how you used to be, 
you know, without that regret of where is that person? Well, that person's dead because that person is no longer 20. You know, it's that person, we've evolved from there. And that's what we're supposed to do is evolve. Right. And in this transition time, it's kind of pull out the things that you remember you liking. And you might find that you don't like them anymore, but at least it's a good, you know, it, it's familiar parts of you that you can pull from to be like, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to add that back because I miss that. Yeah. Does that make sense of how like using yeah. how you were to like be like, hey, I want to find that, but not missing and wanting that? I think that's kind of it. Like I want to know how to feel like I felt, but at this point stage in my life and fit it into who I am today. Next week, Renee is attending a fashion event for the magazine she has partnered with. To help create the image she is searching for, I am taking her into Boston, Massachusetts to visit the designer Samuel Varton. Samuel is originally from Montreal and has an eclectic style that I believe will bring the two worlds of Renee together. To help assist Renee, I have brought in Munji, who has years of experience in the fashion and film industry. Oh my God, you're all going to fit into my clothes perfectly. So my house, my first panic is, what do they look like? Because like, they're all samples, right? But, I'm but you're you're so, fine. But I, yeah. So now it becomes a question of the styling. Do we want to keep it conservative? Do you want to keep it? Uh, do you want to wow the world and say there's a whole other side of me? It's you know, totally the, up to the you. older me, I mean, the younger me <laughs> would be like, I'm 58, I wanna... by the way, I'm older than anyone here. So <laughs> oh, don't worry. Look, yeah. Look amazing. Like the younger me in my South Beach days, I would love to be like flashy and daring yeah. and all of that. But now that I'm not that young, I kind of want to be flashy, daring, but conservative. <laughs> like, fill in here. Probably, yeah. Because yeah. you have a huge event coming up at the Liberty Hotel on the 14th on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And you want something fun to wear. And this is, um, because guess what? You're allowed to have fun. Yeah, and it's my first time. You're, like, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to show off to a figure that you've kept well, obviously. Try, try. I don't, I don't know I if you have to work hard at it. Some people, it's natural. I don't something. work hard enough. I should try harder. I'm the one that does it. So I wear black and I wear like big jackets. So I, yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. right working. But Danielle's helping me with that fun. motivation. Of, have fun. Yeah. Have fun. You okay. know what? It, it happens at a certain point in life, and you're a mom, I'm a mom, you're, you're, we're all parents here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as mom, when we're busy raising children, yeah. we kind of tuck ourselves away a little bit. We do. You know? and it, and this, it makes me very sad. Some sort yeah. that I hear, yeah. like, I have Especially to cringe. Especially a stay-at-home yeah. mom, not to say it's any different for a working mom, but yeah. I'm a stay-at-home mom for five plus years now, and we become like a recruits, like you're just kind of in your own element. So this is your safe zone. Right, you're only trying this is on. very daring. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is very daring, but when it works, it's amazing. And I think I love it. Like you will not give any of the other girls a chance to to make it. If you, if this if we if you pull this off, it's deadly. It's amazing. Is it skin and your tight? husband will look at me and say, "I don't know whether to kill you or to kiss you." Oh my god, that's the dilemma. Um, go through the pieces and maybe pick out like your top three so I can get a sense of... Let's we'll start with the, th the first three. And, and it's okay you if you don't pick the other ones. So, uh, if you don't mind. This is like a uh, golden gold dress. Yes. <laughs> right? But I think she would have to do... A lot, yeah. yeah. One of those bridal bras if you wanted a bra. Um, maybe it will be, you know, more comforting for you to have a I little more so. you know, and less maintenance because that's going to be maintenance up there then it's a gorgeous dress um so maybe I agree. Let's, let's try something with a yeah, little more with some, like some accessories like nice you know sparkly things on your arms maybe long it earrings it looks wider than i already you are not wide my dear <laughs> you are not wide i'm can wide you, to me you, but... if you don't mind doing a, a full circle really nice but yeah as long as you feel good in them right so this is about an evening you're just gonna come out of your comfort zone and you're gonna have fun and you're just going to explore a Renee that you haven't explored in a while okay so this feels too conservative yeah okay but I like it I love that you want to come out of that comfort zone yeah it so, reminds me of a dress that I, I have but not this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that. Feels good. I feel like I need something different underneath. Okay. Something okay. more that's gonna more coverage. Or um, solid. So like yeah, yes. more fitting, like that's gonna hold me in yeah. better. Do you, do you mind I, doing a turn for us? Yeah. Okay. 
Let's go show Sam. I mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. That is. Oh. I, I love that one. Something out of I love surprises. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that. This is a little bit maybe out of your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. See through. It's beautiful. It has a little bit of, not too much bling, just to make it extra, yep. you know. Yep. And it is one of your statement pieces. Oh, by the way. And it has roses. Hold on a second. I just realized something. Yeah. It's a Valentine's Day event. Oh, oh. my God. Oh, my God. I just, that makes it all the more perfect. Oh, my God. I'm representing. You know what I'm, and, and, and you know how I was thinking? I go, yeah, but it looks so much like a Valentine's Day. I go, buzz. The words are coming out. Wait a second. It's a Valentine's Day event. I like the I like the I like idea. I just think because of the occasion, it and might be like spot on. Yeah, yeah. Dream Rose, and my my daughter is named Rose, so it kind of like, oh, <laughs> and okay. it's Valentine's Day. Renee's conflict of emotions as a mother and a wife, and also recreating herself as a CEO, is apparent. We can see and feel how important keeping family first is to her, and at the same time, giving herself permission to follow her personal dreams. Her visit to a Samuel Varton showroom was a step into blending the two worlds. The night of Renee's event, I asked everyday woman in everyday life, if you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? Um, I think um, to have my family close by. That's the biggest challenge being an immigrant and coming for new opportunities, but leaving your family behind, that's where it's really tough. So I think that's, that's what I would change. I would love to have them close by. I am sure we can all relate to how important family is. From the beautiful woman from the fashion event to Renee and Angela's connection to their own family. Angela's a loving wife, mother, and a passionate business owner. What brought Angela to the next level of you? Hello, I'm Angela, and I have been asked the question that if I don't make a change in my life, what will my life look like? And I thought the best way to answer this is to actually show you what I'm in the middle of today. I am cleaning my office. As you can see, it is a big, chaotic mess. And if I don't make a change, my life is going to continue being this big, chaotic mess. Angela's internal disorganization ripples into the quality of the life she loves and causes self-doubt. Today, we will focus on tools Angela can use to create usable systems in her life. Um, you just give me your opinion because yeah. I need... I don't want to, I don't want to do it, but I, I need everybody's opinion <laughs> to, to tell me, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Are, uh, are th things going, I don't know, smoothly. I don't even know what the word to say. What do you, what is the word to even use? I would say everything is at a plateau right now, which is okay. Which is okay. Um, the school stuff is going really well. I'm staying on track. I'm really excited about uh, the other stuff. Is still no news is good news. So that's where we're at. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, that that's all we can ask for, right? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Are you blocking your days off for time? I think that's so important for you. We had talked about that before. It's Have you recreated a block schedule? Yeah, it's still touch and go. Um, the stuff that I can be consistent on, I'm being consistent on. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that when I make appointments that they're somewhere in my driving period of like picking them up or dropping her off. Um, just so I'm not in the car all day because right. that's been an issue for me not being able to sit down and focus because, oh, I have to get up and leave. Um, and I, I know that I do my best study or business or whatever work between the time that she's in school. Um, so I'm trying to make sure that I focus strictly on the school stuff and, and then eventually I'll be rolling it into the business stuff. Okay. So, um, you said your consistent stuff. What is not like, what is your important stuff and what is your not important stuff? What is the stuff that you fit like my consistent, you called it consistent stuff. What right. is that? Um, like my running to and from school for Emma, going to the gym, um, 
I have monthly appointments and I've started seeing um, Jackie every other week. Um, oh, which, good. So that's, that's blocked in for a chunk of time. Um, and then the stuff that I've been putting off is, is like doing the dishes or the laundry or, you know, cleaning off my desk instead of sitting at the kitchen counter where I am. <laughs> Cause I just, <gasps> Out. <laughs> but it looks like nobody's cleaned my house in a month because I've spread out. Right. I'm the kind of person that I can like I can go out, Chris will clean the house, and I'll come back in, and you can't even tell it. And it's just, it's so funny. I don't even know how I got this way, but it's so funny. It's you. Stressful. Okay, so are is, are is one of your things? You're keeping. You're working at your desk now. Not yet. It's still messy. I need to sometimes actually, well, I think I cleaned everything off for, um, either Christmas or for, um, Chris wanted some people over for new year's. So I just took everything that was on the counter, all the paper clutter that we had and put it on my desk and I just haven't been there since. Gotcha. So to organize any part of your life, you have to organize every part of your right. life. So if we were to make a goal of starting to get that organization, because that's all that, that time management, that's yep. making time for yourself, like all of that kind of stuff. Um, let's make a, or you make, what are the things that you feel disorganized in and then prioritize them and then add them into your schedule of maybe when it's time when Emma's home doing her homework and you can do that while she's doing her homework. What is your, when you look, think of yourself in your life, where are you disorganized? I got desk. Yeah. Um, probably the kitchen. Um, just because I've been trying to do recipes that, that go with how, like a healthier way that I'm trying to eat. Um, mm -hmm. Which is which is frustrating because Chris and Emma aren't they don't they don't eat that way, um, and it's I mean it's just like somebody who has food allergies, which is how I have to think of it. Is I'm eating a special diet because I don't want to eat the crap that they're eating, and trying right. to get out of it or into new stuff is just just not going to happen. That's just not worth the fight. No. Because miracles do happen, but sometimes we can just say it's just not worth my fight. Yeah. I don't have the energy for that today. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> they have them. So break that down for me because I'm not there. So I don't know what that looks like for you. What makes that feel unorganized and hard? Um, I think making sure that I have that I have their groceries and my groceries. Um, I had the pantry organized and then Chris started putting away food. So that's now disorganized. I still have stuff from Christmas in my fridge, which is going tomorrow because tomorrow is the night before trash night. So, um, and then just having all this clutter around my, around on my counter because it's where I chose to spread out. Right. So maybe if we, if there is a time this week for you to do the desk, because it seems like you can't get to the kitchen because you got all your stuff right, right? Is that I, true? I keep my rooms, the room that they're supposed to be. So the kitchen is just <laughs> the office is the office. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's a possibility that you you've kind of trained yourself to go into this this cycle because it's the cycle you know it's the cycle that you feel comfortable with. But it's like, it's a, so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but at the same time, it's, it's just hurting your, like you said, it's, it's negative. It's just, it's hurting yourself, but it's what your body knows. And it's right. kind of like, as you said, you know, at, you know, at the end of the day, what your body's going through and your mind's kind of going through, but it's been this circle, this web of things all the time throughout the day. Right. That, so, um, I think there's like one of those trigger, there's those trigger points when you have the thoughts yeah, and then you have that same kind of pivoting place that changes your thought and you go 
into that negative spot because that's what your body knows. So when we change that pivoting right here, like you have this thought, I'm going to go and accomplish something, but then you, but your pivot point is, well, I know I'm going to go get distracted on something else. Right. And then you go into this down roll of like, I'm defeated. Uh, like, why can't I stay on track? Like all of this negative talk, because you almost, um, you unconsciously already know that yeah. you're going to fail and kind yeah. of go that way. Um, so that completion of each skill or each task, not skill, sorry, but that each task is going to change where you pivot, where your mind goes after that. So if you like, it's almost like for me, I have to, when I have to remember three things, I have to hold up three fingers. I just have to walk around like this because then I'll know I have three things. And somehow in my mind, that's how I've trained myself to remember those three things. But if I don't hold up those three fingers, I have no idea what it is. And then I go down this spiral of like, yeah. this damn, this, you know, this darn head injury. I like, you know, and it goes into this just, there's my excuse for the reason why. I can't remember because I failed to own it and I failed to do the thing that I know that's going to help me. And it's just in it, but it stops the evil cycle that we do to ourselves. Right. So it's figuring out your one thing that you're going to do. If a thought comes into your mind, it is like your choice and your commitment to yourself. It sounds stupid. I'm going to get the sand. And that is going to tell me that I love myself. <laughs> but really, that's what it is. Because right. if you don't, you're going to forget the sand. And then you're going to tell yourself how like dumb you are. And why can't you do this? Why is it so hard for you to remember something or whatever those negative self-talk things that you, you know, that you, you just talked about. Right. And then it goes into your body and now your body's holding on to it. And we're going to start all over with, at that same level. Right. We're going to start the next hour with that same thought, the next minute with those in that same state. So it's really has nothing to do with being organized and getting the tasks done. It really has to do with Angela loves Angela. Angela is committed to breaking these habits. Angela's strengths are hidden behind her habits of disorganization and lack of confidence. We will continue to witness her establish strategies on how to manage her daily routines. Will Renee create a stronger mindset of her value and act on that mindset? Will Angela find a system that works and be able to commit to it? Their journey has begun. I am Danielle Rocco, host of The Next Level of You, and I will see you on the other side.